welcome to the second episode of Modern Workplace News Flash, where I take you through some of the latest news so you don't have to. So let's quickly jump into what is new in the world of Microsoft's Modern Workplace. Well, first off, let's have a look at what's new in some of the generic M365 stuff. Hey, if you are an iOS user and you've upgraded to iOS 14, you now have widgets on your home screen. By the way, I've had that on my Android for quite a while, so well done, Apple. Uh, anyway, uh, so you can now add the widgets of the to-do app to your home screen. Um, there's a couple of uh, widgets you can choose from. They look something like that, so that's pretty cool. Right, what's next in the world of OneDrive? Um, there are some new home screen um, for the um, Android uh, OneDrive app. Uh, the home screen shows you some of your recent stuff you've been working on, so it might have changed that slightly. Um, if you are a Samsung or Android user and you've got these motion photos, for those who don't know what motion photos is, Google it. But anyway, it's like a photo that has a little short little video clip before they, it actually shows you the, the photo. Um, but you can now show that you view that in OneDrive as videos. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Um, live photos for iOS have had that for quite a while. Um, but the interchangeability between the two has, is not there yet, which I mean by that is that when you do upload a motion photo and you share that with somebody who's got an iOS device, they just see a photo. So they don't see the video. Um, then also 8K video uh, storage and playback. Um, last time I showed you how the... Um, File size limit has been increased to 250 gig, which means 8K video can be stored now. So you've got an Android S20 or S21 or any of those phones you can do 8K video. You can now store that into OneDrive and also play it back on 8K um, if you've got an 8K device, I suppose. Anyway, that's um, that's new from, from OneDrive. Um, what's new in Teams? Uh, quite a bit, actually. Um, so if you've been living under a rock, you probably don't know, but Microsoft did introduce something new um, in the last couple of weeks, um, which you should be familiar with if you're not already. Um, so <laughs> uh, employee experience. So Microsoft introduced something called Microsoft Viva. Um, what is Viva? Um, I, I would define it as a set of tools and things that Microsoft have been working on and putting them together to create a new employee experience platform. Um, what is an ex employee experience platform? Essentially, it is a whole bunch of things that increases well-being, you know, reduces staff turnover, make people feel a bit more welcome, um, get, make them easier with the culture of the organization, you know, a lot of things that come together on this employee experience platform. But essentially, um, Microsoft have launched a few things, maybe mainly four um, things or products, um, it sounds like there will be more, but for now, we've got these four. Um, and they focus on those four key areas, culture and communication, productivity, well-being, knowledge and expertise, skills and growth. Um, so I'll quickly run you through what those are, uh, if you haven't seen it already. Um, the first one is connections. Wait, let me go back. So culture and communications is with connections. So what is connections? Um, I guess before I say everything here is going to be in teams. Uh, obvious, uh, but connections you can probably see as uh, I would say the next level of an intranet. Now we had these traditional intranets, then Microsoft came up with this thing called modern intranets using SharePoint Online um, with some integration of other things. Um, but I guess this is where it finally comes together. Um, the ability, I think, the focus here is on SharePoint Online, it, the intranet, um, and also Yammer. Um, and you, there's obviously some mobile involved as well. But should you should you not create an intranet on SharePoint? Absolutely not. You have to have a SharePoint online intranet um, to to start using connections. It requires that home home uh, page or the home uh, site, if you would. Um, but it takes all these little things and brings them together. And it's even more dynamic, I guess, than what promised uh, what was promised through SharePoint Online's modern intranet. It's now, it's going to be a bit more user focused, I would imagine, but it is coming soon. Um, and you can read all about it in the press anyway. Um, insights is the next thing. That's about well-being. Now, insights, in my opinion, if you haven't seen my analytics before, uh, it's been out for quite a while. There's also workplace analytics that you had to pay for a bit extra. But again, this is where all those things come together to promote the wellness and, and, and well-being of, of employees and managers. 
you know, um, showing when your team is being burnt out. And it does this all by monitoring certain things like how people communicate, how busy they are in the calendars, how much time they're focusing on X, Y, and Z. Um, so that's currently in preview. So that will be coming soon. Um, and next is topics. So topics is currently available. It is generally available. Um, I believe there is a subscription to it. So it's probably, as far as I understand, it's not included as part of your M365 enterprise licensing. It's an additional cost. Um, but what is topics? It's, it's the proper name, I guess, for project cortex that's been out for a while where Microsoft is taking this whole thing around knowledge management and taking it another level. So in the example here, you can see, um, if you start using terms across chats, um, documents, uh, you know, wherever you use certain terminology, um, topics will be able to surface what those topics mean. And it's also about terminology. Uh, you know, every organization uses different terminology for certain, for the same thing, I suppose. Um, but we can start learning from each other. So topics will create a topics page. Um, I think that's in SharePoint. It will be presented in, in, in Teams, obviously. But it's a page that shows you what that topic is, who the people are that's probably experts in that specific topic. It gives you opportunity to ask questions straight on that page and you'll have either automated responses come back or have access to expertise uh, or expert people in that specific topic. Um, and, and I think that's pretty cool. I think that's a, that's a really uh, a good step forward in terms of, of sharing knowledge and, and um, getting to know the, the organization a lot better. Again, sticking to that exploit, uh, employee experience platform theme. So that's pretty cool. Um, what else have we got? Um, Microsoft uh, Viva's Learning. Um, so it's currently in preview. This is, I think, also a really good idea. I think a lot of organizations have been struggling with internally, um, you know, skilling up people internally. And this will provide organizations the ability to take a lot of learning uh, content that's available and bring them together in one platform. Um, and then, you know, you can create modules and I would imagine, you know, something like classes and courses. Um, and you can assign it to people um, and you can track the, the, the you know, how they, how they fare, uh, when they completed with everything, et cetera. Um, as far as I understand, Microsoft will be starting this out with um, sources such as Microsoft uh, Learn and LinkedIn Learning, uh, probably because they own them. Um, but they're also very committed to the ecosystem of partners out there, such as, um, you know, Plural Site and um, I, I guess there's plenty out there. But keep a lookout for that. So Microsoft Viva, um, some in general availability, all of that coming soon throughout the year. So keep an eye out for, for Microsoft Viva. So that's pretty cool. Next up, uh, let's take a look at uh, some other news about Teams. So from the 8th of February, which is already gone, um, guest access enabled by default for Teams. Now, in the past, guest access was not enabled. Um, Microsoft is now making that mandatory for all new tenants that get spun up, um, which is, I think, a really good idea um, since a lot of people are working remotely nowadays. Um, it's really good to, to enable guest access. You don't have to worry about IT having to set that up before you can get collaborating with your guests. So that's pretty cool. Another thing that uh, Microsoft has changed is the meeting chat moderation. Um, uh, I've been known to chat with people in a meeting before it actually starts, or maybe even after the me meeting is finished. It was a nice way of, um, you know, just communicating to everybody that was in the meeting. But sometimes you don't want that. Um, so you've got now three options to allow chat um, in the meeting. It's either disabled completely, so if you don't want anybody to chat to make the meeting really boring, you can do that. Um, you can have it enabled, which was what we used to. And now you've got this thing that is called only during the meeting. So only whilst the meeting is happening, people can chat. After the meeting or before the meeting, you cannot chat. Cool. SharePoint. What's new in the world of SharePoint? Um, again, sticking to uh, lists. It seems like Microsoft is making a lot of progress in, in the world of lists. Um, so you've now got this edit in grid view. Now it used to be called quick edit, but it's now called edit in grid view. And Microsoft has made tons of improvements in this grid view to make, uh, make it a bit easier. Um, first thing is, you know, um, undo redo. Some of the things that we kind of expect to be there that wasn't is now there, which is cool. So you can, you know, normal undo uh, keyboard shortcuts will work. 
um, you can undo, 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 redo, redo. Uh, it really saves a lot of time of um, saving and going back and changing things that you didn't want to change, etc. So undo, redo, that's pretty cool. Then some of the pickers or field pickers or whatever you want to call them, um, person uh, fields uh, are now easier um, to, to update in this grid view. So to our choice fields, uh, so to our date and time fields, and also, which is, I think it's very cool, is that when you've got a multi-line text field, you now have this built-in kind of rich text editor, you know, where you can bold, italic, and underline things, which I think is a good good contribution there. So thanks, Microsoft. I think it's a good good, uh, good idea. Some worthy mentions, and I put it in this section because I thought there were some, some additional things that I could just share with you. Um, uh, note Skype for Business is retiring this year. Yep, rest in peace, Skype for Business. Um, that's coming at 31st of July this year. So you need to start looking at switching to Teams if you haven't already. Well, you should have. Um, Microsoft made some changes to the Webpack toolbox. Um, so when you uh, when you're on the SharePoint page and you um, want to add a, a, a Webpack, um, it used to show you your um, the the most favorite or the most used web parts first. Um, it's now starting to learn from how you use web parts. So it will show you the ones that you've been using the the, uh, the more latest um, web part. One Outlook, um, this is not new. I thought I'd just throw it in there because I came across it. Um, One Outlook uh, is Project Monarch. Uh, so Microsoft is on this mission to create a One Outlook client across all platforms. Um, starting with the mail and calendar app that you get as part of Windows 10. Uh, and then as the year progresses, um, they'll be moving on to things like Outlook for um, the desktop, etc. It seems like it's all uh, going to be moving towards the um, Outlook web client interface, uh, which I've been using. I don't use uh, the Outlook client just because, uh, because I can, I suppose. But yeah, just some worthy mentions. Um, yeah, and that's it uh, for today's episode. So thanks for watching. Again, like, subscribe, follow, whatever. Uh, and I'll see you again in the next episode. Ciao, ciao. Bye-bye.